Good morning, church. Welcome. Welcome to Community Church of Davie. We are so blessed that you are here. If you are watching us on Facebook, YouTube, or DavieChurch.com, please like, share, and comment. It's a way for us to get our message out to the community. Before we do the announcements, I would like very much to introduce to you uh, Troop 118. Troop 118 will be presenting our colors. Audience, please rise. Color guards, please come forth with the colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please post the colors. Color guards dismissed. Thank you. You may be seated. Before we get started, I'd like to I'd like to read together the vision statement of the church. Here at Community Church of Davy, God is transforming lives through the sharing, the promise, and the hope of God's love. Amen. Amen. Um, are any birthdays or anniversaries coming up this week? Yes, sir. Birthday? Oh, my goodness. I can't see you because of the lights in my eyes, but what's your name? Okay. Art, wonderful. You going to get anything special for your birthday? Oh, did you do anything special? Fantastic. That's wonderful. Fantastic. We would like to sing happy birthday to you. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right. Okay. I understand that um, Dick has a word he'd like to... Uh, like to share with the body? Dick, are you here? Mm -hmm. To my right? Can, are you going to come up? Oh, okay, because I can't see you, so. I mean, that light's in my eyes. I can't see a thing over there, so I'm sorry. <laughs> come on up, Dick. Good morning, church. We had a celebration of life for Priscilla Tyndall, Priscilla Tyndall uh, yesterday at the Old Davy School Historical Museum. Uh, the museum holds 220 people, and there wasn't a seat available after everybody got there. And I want to thank uh, Corky for giving a lovely message and a couple of prayers in honor of Priscilla. Priscilla was an old-time resident of Davie. She was a member of this church. Um, if you will remember, we made a quilt and hung on the wall over there four or five years ago. She was part of that committee that, um, that made that, that quilt, and we displayed it for several years. So uh, we all wanted to honor Priscilla, and uh, uh, we did yesterday. There was a lot of people uh, gave tributes to her, including myself. But um, we really enjoyed it, and, and uh, everybody there enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you, Dick. Corky, you have something that you'd like to, uh, a special presentation you'd like to make, I understand.
Good morning. Um, in honor of Veterans Day, which was on Friday, uh, the Scouts have been here to present the colors as has been their tradition in the past. Also, this morning, we're going to recognize another Eagle Scout. And I say another Eagle Scout because, as you know, we've had several. Uh, I'm going to ask Paul Wunderlich's daughter, Tina, and her sons to please come up and help me with this presentation. When Paul was with us, we, um, he approved us naming an Eagle Scout scholarship in his name. And so this morning, we're going to present the first one. He was one of the first Eagle Scouts for Troop 118 here at Davie. And it's the longest chartered uh, troop in Broward County. And they've done wonderful things around our church for years and years. So this morning, I would like to ask Alexander Maxwell to please come forward. He's our Eagle Scout recipient. And this other presentation is on behalf of the church. We have some pictures that um, we'll put up and you can see the work he's done. His project in, entailed working on the west side of the sanctuary over here by the parking and the, between the church and the park. And it worked very hard and long. And it, if, you haven't, if you don't go on that side of the church, please go over there and take a look. It's a wonderful, wonderful new look and nice and clean and you can see some of the pictures of their hard work. <laughs> Alexander. Whoa, 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 you're not off the hook that easy. You gotta share huh? something about I'll come okay. back and you share what it was like for you. Um There's more pictures. It was past six months I was working planning out the project, working hard with my Eagle coach, my Sky Master, and Mr. Gilmore helping me out throughout the entire process. And it came out better, better than I imagined, and I loved it. And I think it's gonna stay, it's gonna be long lasting um, effects on the beautification of the church. So, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. On behalf of the church, we thank you. Okay. Fantastic. Congratulations to, to you. I appreciate it. We appreciate so much all the work that you've done here for the church. Uh, let's remember to sign the attendance sheets at, in the book at the end of your pew, if you would please. There's also no Bible study on Wednesday, November the 16th or the 23rd. November 18th is Bags of Hope. Our Thanksgiving distribution of the bags will begin. The Girl Scout and Student Ministry are be joining us in this event, and we want to thank you all for your support of this. Lots of families out there are going to be getting Thanksgiving dinners that might not get them if they didn't have us. November 19th, CCAC Church will be having a health fair in Bregan Hall. If anyone would like to attend, they are, they are welcome to come from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. November 27th, Servants are needed to help with the hanging of the greens at 4 p.m. in the sanctuary. Please come if you are able. It's a wonderful celebration as we decorate the church for Christmas. If anyone is interested in learning about end-of-life services, please contact the office. We can give you some information about that. And if you're interested in a Sunday service reading of, uh, during Advent, please contact the church office. Thank you so much, and now it is time for our morning opening prayer. Please pray with me. In the midst of continual change, God remains steadfast in his love. 
God is creating something new, a new heaven, a new earth. Each day offers newness of hope and faith. Let us open our hearts and spirits to God's creative word for us, that we may learn, grow, and serve as effective witnesses to God's love and power. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we sing to pray. the reading of the word, James chapter 1, 22 through 25. But be doer of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For... He looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks 
into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseverances, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts. He will be blessed in his doing. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Please remain standing as you are able as we singing to the Lord. Please be seated. Every week we pray for one of the local churches. This week we are praying for Christ Center Alliance Church and Pastor Steve Weibel. Please pray for their upcoming health fair event and their Christmas program that they show God's grace to all that come. Uh, we also have a candle on the altar this morning. This is for Jim Christie, who passed uh, recently. Uh, so prayers for the Christie family as well. We also want to lift up prayers of praise for the uh, Boy Scouts and all that they do around here um, in the community and here at the church. And also uh, we are praying for the veterans, uh, those who have served. Let us pray.
How shall we thank God for the many blessings he has given to us? Shall we offer mighty songs of praise? Shall we give of our abundance? Shall we again pledge our loyalty to God through lives of service and compassion? Yes, in all these things, we shall offer our praise and our commitment to God. Each new day, each new opportunity is a blessing given freely to us. God's new heaven and new earth reside in us. We have come before God today proclaiming our faith. We have brought the names and situations of those near and dear to us before the throne of grace, seeking God's healing and redeeming love. We place our lives in God's care. In all of this, we are part of God's new creation, meant to bring hope and forgiveness to all. Open our hearts, Lord. We want to be your agents of peace and hope. Open our lives, Lord, and help us work for you in this world so that in the world to come, we may have eternal peace. Now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able, for the glory be to the Father. psalm and if you're a visitor here with us each week we like to respond to the reading of the psalm musically so I'm going to play the response for you one time through then the chancel singers will sing it and we're going to invite you to sing it then once you've had a chance to get it into your ears strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. There There are joyous joyous songs of victory victory in the the tents of the righteous. righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The The right right hand hand of the the Lord Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The The Lord Lord has chastened me sorely but has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. 
This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God who has given us light. Lead the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord who is good for God's steadfast love endures forever. Be exalted, O God, above all heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be
He shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Thank you so much, Michelle. That was beautiful. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Word of God. Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Then the rain fell, and the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. You may be seated. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity, for this time, and we just ask that your Holy Spirit lead and guide us into the truth of your scripture, Father, to transform our minds and our hearts that we can be more like you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. New face, huh? Like, what happened? My name is Chris Williams. I'm a lay person here at the church, usually here at 9 o'clock. Uh, that was my wife, Michelle, who sung that song. Um, a little bit about us. We've been married for how long? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> 22 and a half years. We have seven children that we like, but we have seven grandchildren that we love. I mean, it's like a stupid love when you have grandchildren. And um, it's like I read on the back of a bumper sticker, if I knew grandchildren was this much fun, I'd have had them first. And I know some of you can understand that. So I'm honored to be able to share a thought with you today um, in uh, Pastor Scott's absence. And this message is really... Uh, connected with the song that my wife sung, even though we did not purposely do that. When she chose her song, she had no idea what my text was. And when I chose my text, I had no idea what her song was. But the text is talking about having your life built upon the rock of Jesus Christ. And I guess the question is, what does that look like? How do one build their life on the rock of Jesus Christ? Can we recognize that when we see it? How is that accomplished? So, we're going to read the words of Jesus here in Matthew chapter 7. We just read it, but we'll read it again. Everyone then who hears these words of mine, Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a man, be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, 
and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So what do we gather from this passage? Jesus seems in his infinite wisdom, he covered the spectrum of humanity in just two categories. Those who hear his word and follows them and those who hear his word but does not follow them. And in this also we see what it means to be built upon the rock of Jesus Christ. That is being able to hear his word and implement it into our lives. So do, how do we put into practice the words of Christ by listening to his words and following them. Now, let's concentrate, well not concentrate, let's focus on the foolish man. What did he do wrong? What did the foolish man do wrong? He heard the same words but he chose to do something else. And the something else is what we can talk about today because our world is full of narratives. We have narratives coming from the media. We have narratives coming from our own life experience. We have narratives coming from everywhere so did the man who chose not to follow God's word, did he just choose to follow his culture? Because he didn't just ignore God, he replaced the information with something else. And Jesus called that sinking sand. It's sand because it's not his word. Do we take time as we receive and hear the narratives of our world? Do we take time, and I'll use this term loose, loosely, fact check, to see if the Bible supports the narrative that we hear? Or do we just implement them into our lives without checking? You know, there was a time when the... Uh, the Oprah show was really big. I guess I'm going back in the 90s, early 2000s, and people used to always say, well, Oprah said this. And you would always hear, it's like people were living their lives by what Oprah said. Did anybody fact check? Or should I say truth check, not fact. Facts could be changed, but truth cannot change. So do we take the time to go to the word of God to see if what we're hearing is true. So now, a, a question about the foolish man. What destroyed his house? Think about it. What actually destroyed the foolish man's house? Now, most people will say the storm. But the storm also hit the other man's house, the wise man's house. So it wasn't the storms of life that destroyed the house. It was the foundation. So let's talk about that for a minute. I mean, was, 
did he have a choice in that matter? Could he have chosen to do something different? See, a lot of times we place the blame on others for things that happen to us. And a lot of times we need to really take a close account of who we are and the choices that we make. Was it God's will that the foolish man's house get destroyed? I wouldn't say it was God's will. He had the same opportunity as the other person. But oftentimes, unfortunately, we blame God for a lot of things that happen to us. And maybe that man too, when his house was destroyed, he might have blamed God for that. In Deuteronomy, talking about choices, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, it says, here God is confronting the children of Israel. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. So we all have a choice. So now let's look at, we, we, we see what Jesus said there. Let's go and look at his half brother, James. James had something uh, to say concerning this issue also. James chapter one, one verses 22 through 25. James says, be but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Hearing the word and actually applying it. In James, he put this one word here that caused me to pause, and that's self-deception. Could you imagine being self-deceived? See, this is worse to me than being lied to. Because when you're deceived, you are fully persuaded with all your emotions that you're doing the right thing, and at the same time, you're doing the wrong thing. As a good analogy, there is a highway in Georgia um, and I used to take when I would go to uh, up to Tennessee and uh, through the hills, well, I was going up to Ohio, but in Georgia, I-75 and I-85 runs together. And then after a while, those two highways split off. And if you're not careful, you will end up, depending on where you're trying to go, well, what happened to me is, and I've taken this road many times, one day I was driving and I ended up on I-85, which was taking me to Alabama, instead of I-75, which I was trying to get to North Georgia. But you know, the music's playing, you're rolling 80 miles an hour, you've been driving ever since you left Miami, you're not really thinking. Now that is self-deception, because I rode that for an hour, and then I realized, wait a minute, nothing here looks familiar. And then I saw the sign, I-85, I was heading to Alabama. I know no one in Alabama. 
I did not even want to go to Alabama. But you know how it feels when you finally turn around to be self-deceived is that. And I could have taken that road all the way into Alabama, not knowing that I was on the wrong road. So what are some of the modern day examples that we have of these narratives that we hear, these highways that look like the highways we should be on, very similar, but it's not the highway that Christ would want us on. What are, what are some examples of those narratives? Some of them are just things that, oops, things that come from your culture, from our culture. We live in a world that has a voice and those voices, we hear them and sometimes I believe we subliminally believe what we hear. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a, 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 a narrative out. Uh, this could get a little scary, but shouldn't be too bad. But it's a narrative that I have fact-checked, should I say, with the Bible. So now there's a narrative out that I need to go and buy, I need to go and buy an electric car because I'm burning fuel, which is heating up the earth. And the earth has reached record temperatures. And this is not a good thing. So it's climate change. So as I hear that, I come across this verse in Ecclesiastics chapter 1, verse 9. And it says this, that which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, see, this is new? It has already been in ancient times before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who come after it. So if this verse is true, it's telling me there's nothing new under the sun. So however hot the earth is now, it probably reached this temperature way before I was born. And after we all die, it's probably gonna reach that temperature again. It probably reached that temperature far before we had fossil fuels. So that's telling me that the earth runs in cycles. But that's not the scientific narrative of today. The scientific narrative is we are causing this through fossil fuel burnings. And I'm not trying to make this a political stance. I'm just showing how modern day narratives can be debunked by the scripture if you take time and look at scripture. So now, what am I going to believe? And this is where I think it's very subtle for us Christians. We have to be more intent and more on purpose in our studies of the scriptures because of the crowd of narratives that are going on today that people are believing. So now, Let's examine ourselves. How do we respond to the storms of life? An examination of your heart. Is the foundation of your heart built on the sands of fear or the rock of faith. Where is your heart founded on? Second Timothy chapter one verse seven says, "For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, 
and love and self-control. An examination of your mind is the foundation of your mind built on the rock of peace or on the sands of anxiety and worry? Where is your mind? The word tells us in Philippians chapter four, verses six through seven, do not be anxious about anything. Comes from anxiety, being anxious. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Let's examine, let's, let's examine our relationships. Are the foundations of your relationships built upon the rock of love or on the sands of self-centeredness? It's all about you. It's all about me and my own. Do you reach out to others? Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. So in closing, we have to examine the narratives to see should it be incorporated in our lives as Christians is it, does it line up with what Jesus said, or are we going to build on something that is sinking sand? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. And Father, we just pray that our hearts are able to receive the seed of your word, that it will grow. And Father, it will bring forth transformation in our lives. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with us as we sing our closing song? You'll find the words on the screen.
if you're giving, the offering plates are on each door of the exit and in the north X. And if you're watching us online, press the donate button. God will bless you for your gifts. And Father, as we go, as we leave this place, Father, may your, your smile rest upon us. Give us grace and peace as we go out into the world. And we give you thanks and praise for this time. And may we all be protected until we return back to, the, to this place again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. Mm -hmm.